Science MG and PPN with live talk. What's going on? How's it going? Doing all right. All right. How's everybody doing? We are going to talk tonight about uh, mass shootings and this this and I'm and you know I'm not even sure how to pronounce this thing. I I, I keep trying to say it. <laughs> Scopoline, <laughs> right? Or help me out. Right. <laughs> I I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Some kind of magical drug that's been around forever and a day, and it's used on the daily in Colombia for all their like little crimes and whatnot. But I did um, do a little bit of uh, research here and there today, um, and found out that the CIA um, attempted it back in the '60s and uh, for a true serum. And <clears throat> they were having some drawbacks at that time um, with hallucinations. Now, I'm sure with refining and understanding exactly what dosage to use, it could probably be profitable to them. Um, basically, this drug renders whoever um, complete you know, willpower gone. You can tell them to do stuff, and they'll do it. And you have control of them for, like, I don't know, whenever the drug wears off, 24 hours or whatever. And then they have complete amnesia and don't remember any of it. So I'm just kind of throwing this theory out there, you know, um, because so many mass shootings, it makes no sense to me. I mean, this this site you showed me today, I'm just blown away by how many freaking shootings that's going on. I understand they got a gun grab going, and they got to make it look really bad, but I don't think there's that many people in the world that's completely out of their minds unless they're being controlled somehow. I mean, and, and picked randomly or something, and oh, let's hit this state next week. Let's And these people, they either kill them so they can't talk, or they completely don't remember anything. So, having that said, um, what did you find for us? I know you found a really cool site. I'm like beyond myself. It's the Gun Violence Archive uh, radar. You want to okay. lead into some of that that you... Uh, I got to refine it. <laughs> It's really cool, though. I mean, it's it's pretty much. I think it's only been out or, or around since uh, 2014 because that's as far back as I can really go with that site to see and compare. I really want to compare, and I know this is kind of stupid because it's apples to grapes when you look at the, all the mass shootings now with Obama, and then you would note. The, 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 I'm guaranteeing that there was hardly any of this back before Obama. So I know this has to be a major part of the gun grab. It just makes no sense that everybody's just decided, you know, hey, we're going to go mass shoot today. Yeah, right, right. I I totally agree, and give me a sec. I finally found it. <laughs> well, I have like 500 tabs up from all this research I've been doing. And here we go, the Gun Violence Archive of Mass Shootings. And when you come over here and you click on 2016, it shows a nice, concise list of what date the incident was on, what state it was in, the city, the address, how many were killed, how many were injured, and then it actually lets you view the source of the incident, which I think is amazing. I was able to look through here, and as you can so, there is five different shootings on February 20th of this year, with 10 people killed total and 15 total injured, which is like, what, what happened on the 20th that it's like everyone decided to go out and kill people? This, this is insane. Have you been able to establish like, any kind of a pattern? Like, is it the same states reoccurring constantly? I have not been able to dig into it that what? much yet. That, that's a thought. That's I'm a thought. also curious 
because it has the dates listed. I'm wondering if the shootings correspond with full moons. Yeah, it's kind of a reach, but... Well, now, now I, I can honestly say, because growing up, I um, lived in an area where um, my dad and I could listen to the police scanner, and it was not encrypted. And um, always on a full moon, you could tell because that evening, the traffic on the police scanner would pick up, guaranteed, for both the police and EMS. Now, is this more on a weekend or is this just weeknights or it, both? It, it could be any day of the week, whatever a full moon was on. Um, and like one or two days on either side of the full moon, that's when it happened. All right, I'm kind of a skeptic because, you know, to me, and I'm weird like this <laughs> because okay. I need I need logic. It's got to make sense. And when you kind of start misconstruing and throwing some, some crazy out and left field stuff in the mix, it kind of makes me want to question more. You know, I'm very inquisitive by nature anyway. So, you know, okay. you, you're throwing this full moon thing at me, which is almost like, you know, hey, it's a werewolf time, okay? And, and I'm, I'm having a hard time with that. I um, I just happened to take a real quick gander at the moon phases and uh, try to correspond them with this month's mass shootings, and that didn't pan out. So um, that theory is kind of kicked to the back seat. I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm – all right, I've said this a million times. I'm 48, so I go back on what I know from my lifetime, and I look at – patterns and I look at history and I look at all these different increments and you know I, I never really looked at the moon as in a catapult for any of this crazy stuff I just always heard the term freaks come out at night <laughs> mm -hmm. so you know I mean that's just their time at night to start doing all the little criminal crap but um I never looked at the moon playing a role in something like that. I always thought there was something bigger and 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 better that would contribute to something like that, which would this this devil drug would fit into that. I mean, the the, the delivery system is so simple, you know. Just um, uh, smelling it, you're you're triggered. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, well, I I will point out with this drug, um, it can be administered via aerosols, like just a spray can. It could be in a cigarette. Oh, hey, buddy, you want a cigarette? Well, it's laced with the drug. Gum. There's that powder around just chewing gum. There you go. That's how you get it in you. I saw some people even had it on paper. Yeah. To, to blow in someone's face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, the delivery system is, is you know, easy as, it, as I'll get out. So being able to uh, trigger someone, tell them what you want them to do, they go do it, and either you kill them so they can't talk later, or they have amnesia as a side effect and can't remember what the hell they did anyway. Now, are you ready for the real kicker, MJ? Just throw it out there, brother. Less uh, – about 90 minutes – before the um, Kansas shooter went on his rampage at the lawnmower factory, he was served with court documents on a restraining order. But that's paper, and exactly. that's before mass shooting. Right. And police said that the only way he could be stopped was by shooting and killing the shooter. Right. And nine times out of ten, when people go do these mass shootings, they're in return shot and killed. And um, the ones who do uh, escape that ending ends up with amnesia not knowing what happened. They don't have a clue of what happened. Or they're like, I don't know, you had mentioned SSRI medications before that they're on something, you know, that um, 
messes with their thoughts or their thought patterns or they're just out there. Right. Right. So I don't I'm I'm just kind of throwing something out there because it this it makes no sense to me to have all this going down. Um this this website that you put up there just in the year 2016 we've had how many mass shootings? I know this is a major gun grab year for him because this is his last year. Um, well, not only for him, but it's also a major gun grab issue for uh, presidential candidates. Well, you know, those who uh, want to go that route <laughs> with the Second Amendment being a big deal right now and uh, NRA and all who are pro Pro Second Amendment. They're they're not going to vote for the guy who wants to do the gun grabs. And we don't right. have a gun problem. Let's get that out there. We do not have a gun problem. We have a criminal problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Guns are inanimate objects. They just don't go out and shoot people. Just like forks and spoons don't go out and make people fat. Okay. Well, well, I want to bring this point up because it is a fantastic point with what you're saying of guns aren't necessarily inherently bad. A, I won't say all, but a majority of mass shootings happen in gun-free zones. The popular dial -a, dial a ride app for your smartphone, Uber, um, there was a mass shooting in Michigan when it Uber driver killed six people that were going ride in his car. That this when I heard Uber basically ban guns from their vehicles from for either the driver or the passenger not to have a gun, I was waiting for there to be a shooting in a Uber car. Right, that only makes sense because, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then and and they're blatant, and it's it's blatant in your face. I, I what I don't get is, you have this gun-free zone, and your leftists think, okay, that's going to be safe, but criminals don't follow laws, and ninety percent of the time their guns are illegal, throwaways or whatever. So, that's the same thing theory. <laughs> okay, this is going to sound a little weird to you, <laughs> but. When I, it is a joke amongst hunters. If you see a no hunting sign, that means it's good hunting. There's deer there, okay? Lots of deer because there's no hunting. No one hunts there. So same thing applies. No gun zone, okay? No uh, free guns. No gun zone, so you don't have no guns there. That means the grim, criminal activity is good there because you're the only one, the criminal, that has free will to do whatever there because no one else has a gun. There's no threat. But if everyone, you know, carried a concealed carry, then there's a threat to them, you know, so you would have less crime there. It just makes sense. But to the leftists, they make it out like if we get rid of all guns, we won't have crime. Bullshit. Look around you. History tells you that. Well, well let's, let's take one state in particular, California, which is known – for the entire state having tough gun laws, all right? And where did this recent shooting happen? Not not one of the recent recent ones, but San Bernardino. Where is that? California. Did the gun um, laws work there? No, because the people that did the shooting were lawless. Meaning right. they did not follow the law. Right. And, well, there was another one on the 19th of February in California. Um, I th I'm not sure how to pronounce that area. Valhalla or... <clears throat> um, that sounds I, right. Yeah, that was on the 19th. Um, there was one killed, three injured. And then, of course, you know, um, after before that, prior to that, was in Los Angeles. So, um, and that was on the 6th. So it's it's like I'm seeing Arizona, Colorado, District of Columbia, Florida, California, Florida again, Mississippi, Illinois, New York, 
Louisiana, Florida, Alabama, Texas. This almost like a repeat of the same freaking states. This whole since January 2016. Uh, January 8th on the mass shooting list, Chicago. Mm -hmm. And Chicago is known for having tough gun laws. Let's let's show what we're looking at here. They, have, do a screenshot. they shoot people right. constantly in Chicago. It's a daily event. You know, yeah. I always said I can't imagine how many people's left in Chicago the, as much as they keep shooting each other. And right there, Chicago, mm -hmm. January 8th, one killed, four injured. And I will point out that these numbers do not count the shooter being killed. Or the suspected shooter, I should say. Right. Be politically correct. Even though there's cameras and thousands of eyewitnesses for some of these, there's still the suspected shooter. Okay, so let's see here. This is from January 6th until current, like today. You, ha you have on this page... I see Florida, Tennessee, Illinois, Delaware, um, Virginia, California, California. Now, this is just for mass shootings, correct? Correct. This isn't like, you know, your everyday things that go on, like Baltimore. I think there's always, well, we used to call it body more because there's always a killing every day. But this is just what they consider a mass shooting when it's involved with more than three people? No. Um, wait. Yes. More than three people. As of 2013, the FBI changed their um, definition of a mass shooting um, from it was four people either killed or injured by a shooter. And in 2013, FBI changed that definition to three people either killed or injured by a shooter. Not counting the shooter himself. Okay. So we have um, on this page, which is the beginning of this year, Virginia, Washington, California, California, Virginia, Delaware, Illinois, Tennessee, Florida. Flip to the next page. To bring Give me a current. sec. Okay. Now you see the similarities that keep showing up? I mean, you've... Florida. <laughs> yeah. And California. And California. Scroll down a bit. That Alabama and Louisiana and Illinois. Florida. Yeah, California, Florida. California, Florida. Chicago. Mm-hmm. And Arizona. So, <clears throat> to me, in the, in the past, you know, since the beginning of this 2016... It's pretty much consistent with the same area, sort of speak. Of course, now today, I think, was the first time, what? Scroll all the way up, please. Today was the first time for Washington State. No, I thought I saw Washington State. Was that D.C.? I'm, I'm looking. On the other here. second page. D.C. is right here. Okay. February 3rd. Okay. And Washington State, Seattle, January 26th. Okay. Second one down. Right. Now, these are just shootings. This isn't like the dude that was out there in Akron with his machete and that kind of stuff. Correct. Because they don't count those, of course, because that's kind of not in the agenda for the gun grab. Right. And, you know, that that kind of stuff must normally happen in, quote-unquote, civilized countries. Now, this one that took place in Kansas um, at the uh, lawnmower factory, that XL, um, okay. they, they tried to, one article tried to tie him in with the Black Lives Matter. Now, I saw no evidence whatsoever putting him with the Black Lives Matter. 
So I'm just kind of going to kick that theory to the back seat because I really don't see anything to do with that kind of links him in there. Now, as far as him being served papers and maybe this uh, scopopoline might have been laced in those papers, that's a possibility, you know, and, and they told him to go do this, you know, and of course he can't talk because he was killed, but um, it's just a theory. It, it's not set in stone. It's just kind of connecting dots. Is it possible? Um, what's the um, situation with the other shooters? I mean, from here on out, maybe we should just start watching the situation behind stuff like that. Right. Right. So, I mean, that's something we should, you know, look into as well. But I just thought after, you know, <clears throat> finding this information out on this particular drug, how accessible it is, how easy it is to deliver, um, how it would be the perfect you know, theory to fit with all this craziness because it just doesn't make any sense for all this to happen all of a sudden and fit the gun grab agenda so perfectly. And they they really, in my opinion, insane part about this entire thing is we can see how bad this drug is um, by people that were interviewed in Colombia. And it is now being used, if I remember correctly, in the United States as a motion sickness patch. Motion yeah, well, sickness. I also heard that NASA uses it for that. Yeah, that's, that was part of that one we were watching, and they said that NASA uses that for uh, motion sickness. It was 3 point something, I forget what they call it, like milligrams or whatever. Right. It, it, it does different things at different dosages. Um, uh, right. Anything like 10 milligrams and above will, will put you in a coma and kill you. Right. Right. You know? Um, well, back in the beginning of the 20th century, um, uh, obstetricians would mix the scopamine morphine and chloroform and induce a twilight sleep during childbirth and it would cause drowsiness, disorientation, hallucinations and am amnesia. What would happen would be the doctor would administer the combination of drugs to the pregnant mother who was in labor so basically, she wouldn't remember any of the discomfort of being in labor. None. Now, how convenient would that be for this gun grab agenda to be able to trigger anyone with a special dialed in dosage that they would be, be basically at your will, whatever you want them to do, okay, and not recall any of it? And wake up in jail. Want to know if they get if they make it through, okay, and not killed, and not know what happened or recall it. How convenient that would be. Right, right. Yeah, you and know, just puts them right on the nut job list. Yeah, you know, they're just so well, he's nuts. Well, apparently, if you're going to go on a you know a, a rampage and shoot multiple people, you're pretty much a nut job to begin with because normal people don't do that. That's just not normal behavior. This is true. Well, something that MJ, you and I have talked about in private a lot, if I remember correctly, is how uh, they seem to bring up certain things all the time in various ways that you have to look for the meaning kind of thing. And the obstetrician that figured out that um, uh, scopamine could be used as a truth serum was Dr. Robert House. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the show House MD, well, the main character's last name was House, and his best friend on the show's first name was Robert. Are you trying to play Enter the Stars on me? 
<laughs> I, stop it now, mister. <laughs> that one do his thing, thing, man. <laughs> that the Nazis used that drug yes, they did. in World War II, too, for the same reason, for a truce serum. Yes, they did. Um, I did right. catch that. And Project Paperclip would have brought all, over all those Nazi scientists in order to be in the U.S. And guess what? That's about when Project MK Ultra started. And where did Obama just recently go? Jacksonville. Cuba. Cuba. Jacksonville. Who would go to Jacksonville? Oh. I have no idea. It's just the <laughs> lamest city in the world. <laughs> okay, Cuba, Colombia, close enough, right? But you got yeah. Venezuela, and what else is over there that that's easily um, that that trees found in? So there was three places. It was Colombia, Venezuela, Colombia, and one more. Dag nabbit, I forget. No, um, uh, South um, American uh, countries. Yeah, the, yeah. It's near Brazil. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure say, Brazil probably has their share too. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But you want to know why the crime is so high in Colombia? Well, there you go. You know, and if CIA is going to try and use it back in the 60s, I mean, and it's been filtered down and refined and, you know, um, calculated just right, it's a very good chance that that's what's going on right now. Hell, if they can design a frozen dart that can, you know, be shot in someone, melt, and create a heart attack without any kind of signs whatsoever or... You know, when you do an autopsy, you can't. There's no signs whatsoever. It just looks appears like that person had had a heart attack. Then I can't, I can't throw this use of this drug out the window either. I'd have to say it's very plausible. Right. So, um, and and to think about all, I, I've never heard of so many mass shootings ever in my lifetime until now. Now, when the big, huge gun grab agenda is out in full force, and this is his last year occupying the White House, just throwing it out there. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying it's a theory, something to look into, something to connect the dots on. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I, I can't, I can't. Looking at those stats on that page. <laughs> we'll put the link below, uh, you know, on this one. But I mean, I just, um, I, it's amazing, and it makes no sense. It just, to me, everywhere I look, it points to something to stir up a civil unrest, to throw in martial law, and then, bam. Right. Also, um, I wish to correct myself when I was saying with Doctor House, um. The Dr. House's character's best friend, first name was not Robert, it was James. But the actor's name, first name, is Robert. I will sleep so much better knowing that now. <laughs> well, I, I felt the need to um, point out my own error. You came correct. correct, that's all that matters. And. Well, uh, I, I'm man enough to admit when I'm wrong. <laughs> and our room troll, <laughs> uh, top oh over here, he's telling us, hey, you know, the occupier in the White House has only got 255 days to make this happen, so you know he's going to be stepping it up a lot. Yep. And soon, you know. And, and that that draws me to to my, my next uh, thought in mind which comes the pre and post should hit the fan mentality people need to think about this thing you know people have the preconceptions of what they're used to their life being now they never think about what life's going to be post should hit the fan and um i can't stress it enough is that you can't right now you need to prepare for when shit hits the fan <laughs> you know and um we did this little it was a promotion for a movie was it not I found that just skimming, and I thought, hey, that made me think, because now that's only, you know, using um, one scenario. 
that was using a, a bioweapon scenario. It's assimilation um, to promote a movie, but it makes you think. So I'll put that link in below too. It's just a little fun simulator that you go through. Um, and I, I don't know why I say fun. Let's just say it's interesting simulation to go through. Um, giving you a scenario of a bioweapon, your patient zero, um, you put in your location, your real location, it'll give you real hospitals near you, um, real scenarios, um, and it runs down to see how many days it took you to, I guess, um, end, end your existence or end the world or whatever, and how many people you killed along the way because of your... Uh, um, transmitting this this bioweapon so it's pretty nifty anyway I'll put that it just make it's food for thought it makes you think okay that's the whole purpose of that and um, but even though it's promoting a movie um, the and it's good though I mean because it gets you in the mind frame of what happens if shit hits the fan tomorrow who are you are you prepared you know we've been going through this week um, with a training regimen I put out for the group um, with getting all your ducks in a row is how I like to put it that is um, knowing your plan A B and C if you're going to bug in or bug out and you need to know routes and alternate routes where to stay away from what to avoid how to conceal all those things okay now this kind of sorta you know puts you in the mindset of I need to check my preps so how much food do I have how long will it sustain me water how long will it sustain me and I'm going through it right along with the guys and I found that food we're good water we're 25 gallons short so I need to start working on that um, first aid I think we're covered um, I'm a little skimmy on some things I want to I do want to get um because you think first thing that's gonna happen as far as wounds or whatever when when it comes to should hit the fan people are gonna be you know mass hysteria running around whatever you're gonna you're looking at cuts abrasions um, broken bones maybe gunshot wounds maybe stab wounds you want to be able to fix those things so just use common sense when it comes to that stuff and be able to cover it you know what I mean um, the thing of the matter is that we're gotten so comfy with our life the way it is it's hard to even imagine what life's going to be then you know and and I think that that uh, scenario did kind of give you um, that simulation I was just talking about a little bit ago does give you a little taste of, of food for thought as far as um, what what it's going to be like as far as all you know the people in your neighborhood it with it, and it even gives you the population that's the coolest thing it gave me the population for my town and if I want to stay there or do I or would it be smarter to get out of there and then it gave me areas of where I could go or pick and choose where I wanted to go if I wanted to leave my you know my area so that simulation was pretty nifty and um it made me think a lot too and it's it's uh I like to be able to put something together on a grander scale not just that scenario there's multitudes of scenarios you can have natural disaster earth you know massive earthquake Madrid fault line um, you could have um, hurricanes tornadoes um, you know martial law whatever you know and that would be pretty cool to put together for for the the person who's in the prepper in mind or the you know the survivalist so or, or you have to also keep in mind with all these aging nuclear power plants and nuclear fuel storage facilities, how they're aging, is another way it could be they start leaking due to um, hurricane or just age or they're leaking tornado. now. You see yeah, what's going on? In <laughs> they're every time you turn more. around, right? Every time you turn around, there's another nuke plant got an issue. You know, yep. the last the last two weeks, I've, I think I've heard of two or three different nuke plants that's leaking. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> so it's like, I, I mean, things that you didn't hear of before. Now all of a sudden, it's like it's coming at you at all angles. It's it's a mass craziness. It doesn't make any logical sense of how all of a sudden things are chucking along everything is you know half okay and the next thing you know all hell breaks loose you got mass shootings out the yin yang you've got mat you know nuke plants leaking I mean it's coming at you, you got um, super lice in the news now 
you know, you're going to come out with all these diseases that we didn't have before. We're going to have now because of all the immigrants coming in. You know, um, it, it's it's getting crazier by the day. And if you don't have the mindset of preparing and getting, you know, ready for whatever's coming because it's coming. And I, I I put out my prediction last show. It's between now and early part of next December. It's, it's just something in there that I feel it in my bones is going to happen that's going to break this whole thing loose. And um, I also saw in, in a news article that mentioned, and this is going to shake my, my skepticism again, like your full moon werewolf theory, but aliens. Okay, now go on that. I'm intrigued. Well, um... I don't know how to think about that. I've heard about Project Bluebeam. I've heard about the false coming. Bluebeam um, or Blue Book? It's two different it, projects. Uh, Bluebeam, I believe, because that's the hologram one. Okay, all right. Yeah. Because Blue Book was the one um, basically documenting all the UFO sightings. Officially documenting. Okay, well, Project Bluebeam is is a hologram program, and a lot of people believe that that's how they're going to um, somehow instill fear as far as you know the second coming, you know, of Christ or aliens. And then you have this meteor that's coming next month that's got people shaking and rattling. I mean, it's just so much crap going on at the same time. It makes no sense to me. It, you know, it, it's like there's no rhyme or reason how we're getting slammed from all angles. And then you have the Russians, and I believe Jackson can correct, correct me if I'm wrong. There was another article that said it uh, threatened the U.S., uh, I guess, the, you know, the administration. If they don't come clean about the aliens, they were. Was that the Russians? It was a recent article. So um, then you saw a video, or I saw a video today, that these crazy sounds, these humming sounds in the skies, and people don't know where all this shit's coming from. I mean, you know, that just makes me wonder. What about the, the what, sonic boom up in the northeast of the U.S. a couple weeks ago? Yeah. That, that's another one. Weather balloon. <laughs> that's swamp the, gas. Swamp gas. You know, that's the crap. And then swamp I don't, gas. <laughs> Somebody snuck their drone over Area 51. Dabu. No. It was somebody else because Dabu got – he didn't get the footage that he wanted to get. This other cat got the actual footage of everything over 51, and it showed that it was – there's. it was saying that it was just a um, – Area 51 is basically a – Distraction? Like, a fake place. Okay. The real place is Dulles or Duluth. D Dulles, yeah. Okay. And that there's um, was it Dark Sky Watcher? Do you watch that too? Do you did you notice somebody? I just no, it wasn't not that one. It was on mine. Maybe it was Dark Sky Watcher that got that footage. I'm trying to manage two different YouTube channels, so I can't remember which one it was. <clears throat> But he got footage up there and said that that was just – Area 51 is just basically to keep people attention there where really the other one, the real one, is in Dulce. And that's what houses the real shit and that there's aliens there and blah, blah, blah. Well, honestly, that, that would not surprise me because I know that according to declassified documents – the SR-71 Blackbird, which is a declassified military jet, which is the highest flying airplane in the world. This thing was built back in the early 80s, I think. It is the highest flying, the fastest flying, and it was developed at Area 
51. So it's like I'm I'm not surprised that there's stuff there that no one understands because the government is developing stuff that we don't understand that we cannot fully grasp yet. Well, they are afraid of mass panic and all this other crazy shit. But yeah. to me, it's like I don't know. I want to know. I want to know what's going on. I want to. If we have missiles to shoot somebody clean across a freaking map, and we have things that'll reach the moon if we really did go to the moon, because <laughs> that's <laughs> that's also up for debate. Um, then we should be able to shoot these asteroids that are coming too close to the Earth. And fragment them, but is, then that course that causes and poses another problem of where they land and you know whatever. But I would think I would rather take smaller rock than a large ass rock, you know. And then they had somebody what they landed on a comet and it was making sounds. Was that the astro astronauts hear sounds in From space? A comet. It was a big ass comet, and they they sent what, some kind was of it a comet unmanned or was it thing the up there and landed dark on it. Side of the moon. Oh no, you're thinking about uh, the astronauts when they were up there and they heard music on the dark side of the moon. Uh, That's it. No, okay. I'm talking about something completely unrelated. It was a comet. Okay. All right. Um, and they 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 I think they took an unmanned whatever up there, landed on it, and recorded whatever, and they heard sounds coming from it. And what nut job puts a a microphone on a satellite to land on a comet when it's in freaking space. Well, why would they do that? What would give them the um, prompt to want to do that? Which raises even more questions. So, yeah, that whole thing... <laughs> You know, it's almost like you have to think about reality as it is, <laughs> okay, for whatever it's, it is. This is, you know, whatever reality it is. You look at all these mass shootings. You look at the, the possibility of this this uh, scalopapine. I'm not saying it right. Say the word. Come on. Throw it out there. Scalopamine? Yeah, drug, okay, as a possibility trigger, okay. Then <clears throat> you throw out aliens, possibility of these crazy significant alien things then you have everybody else's um, thoughts on uh, <clears throat> secret societies okay um, because of Scalia I can't even say his name right I'm having a tongue-tied issue tonight Scalia yeah they're saying that something about Bahamian Grove with him okay um, that he was you know murdered because of this or whatever so now you have that your secret society stuff. Um, the gun grab agenda, you know, um, the mandatory vaccinations. I mean, they got you coming and going, your head spinning. You can't, you know, this meteor's coming. Uh, March, I want to say, 4th or 7th, something like that. It's going to be like 11,000 miles from Earth, but it has the potential of creating some issues. Then you have CERN, who wants to reach a different dimension than ours, which could potentially cause massive issues. You know, and all these these craters opening up, <laughs> you know, these uh, sinkholes, you know, um, weird sounds that have no rhyme nor reason where they're coming from or why they're, they're happening. Lame-ass excuses from many officials. So now you're left thinking, okay, I need some more fluoride rinse because I'm confused. Well, it's interesting you brought up fluoride because I, I have it here somewhere. All right, the FDA just banned fluoride-based chemicals and food packaging because of their toxicity, but won't ban fluoride in public water supplies. That's it's, it's a known neurotoxin. They have it in toothpaste and your tap water and even your glorified bottled water. Um, technically, it's not a general neurotoxin. It is a developmental neurotoxin. Well, if I, the difference is? 
The difference is developmental would mean as you're developing as a person. So when you're an infant to when I think when you're 20, Did, that's they, considered age of development. Weren't they putting that also in um, baby formula? Oh, yeah. It's well known that it's in most baby formula. So they they got you at birth with your mm -hmm. vaccines and your fluoride formula if you're not being breastfed and whatever else is going on the sky's polluted the you know your food's polluted the water's being polluted so they got you coming and going yep how is anyone even supposed to be able to function <laughs> you know, or even look forward to what kind of future with all right. this crap going on. Well, honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm not married. I don't have a girlfriend, but looking to the future, Are I am you advertising to our viewers. No, <laughs> I, I am Easy scared. There, I'm scared for the future of my children. Even though I know they're years down the road, I'm still terrified for them of all this crap they are going to have to put up with. Well, I'm I'm just uh, I'm concerned about our re you know near future. We're looking at an economic collapse completely. I mean, to the point where there's no return. We're going there. There's no two ways about it. You know. We're going to end up with a collapse of some sort, civil unrest, martial law. All of this is going to go hand in hand, and it's coming really soon. So if you haven't prepared yet, you better get your ass in high gear and start educating yourself. Ask questions. There's not one dumb question. There's only an unanswered question. So I would start asking people um get in a group if you don't want to get into a group if you you know if you ain't made a list by now you're not doing your job and i wouldn't be worried about it because if trump can make the freaking terror watch list <laughs> you best bet your booty you're on it too <laughs> you know i just think all of this stuff is stupid because what was right is now wrong and what was wrong is now right and it makes no sense so the best thing to do is, is to get prepared. Absolutely. You need to stock up water, food supply, supplies, uh, even your bags, your clothes, and all that kind of stuff. Things you're going to need and be prepared to live out in the woods if it comes to that. Especially if you're in an urban area. If you're in an urban area and you've got a population of a whole bunch of lotta. Okay, I'm going to throw that number out at you. A whole bunch of lotta, okay? You're not going to want to stay there very long because civil unrest is pretty freaking ugly, and they're going to come after people who have things that they don't have and they need because they didn't themselves did not prepare. So you have to be willing, you know, able to defend yourself, and if you're not able to defend yourself, the best bet is to get the hell out of Dodge. And um, the best thing to do is be able to um, fend for yourself for at least the first two weeks, and that's food, water, um, shelter, you're, and, and you have to imagine this, if you're a family of five or a family of four and you have pets, you have to be able to fend for yourself, your, your kids, and your pets. And um, so you have to um, prepare for all of that. And that's first aid, food, water, clothes, and um, something for defense. You know, And start learning about your wild edibles because once your food runs out, that's where you're going to head. Yep, you need to be able to hunt, know what kind of plants are edible, what aren't. Same with there's certain municipal purposes out of trees and stuff like that. And you need to learn all that stuff so you know what you're doing. You get yourself sick or dead with your own hand. But you also need to make sure that you're looking up wild edibles and medicinal wild medicinal plants for your area because what could apply to me living in Florida couldn't apply, wouldn't apply to you or y'all living in the, 
the um, northeast of the U.S. Exactly. exactly. Totally different climate. Exactly, and and you need to prepare for that. And if you, but the, and the thing is, you can't foresee anything. So, you know, you you want to pack a whole. But there's a guy I know, or I don't know him personally. I just talked to him on on the web, and um, he's a fellow YouTuber. He has, <laughs> he has a never coming home bag, and it weighs like fifty pounds. And he takes this thing out with him when he does his hiking, and he'll hike for, you know, eight miles or whatever. That bag at 50 pounds is going to end up feeling more like 80 pounds, 100 pounds, as the further the, you, the day goes. If you're on foot, you might start out in a car. That doesn't mean you're going to end up in that car. It means that, you know, you run out of gas. You can't acquire any more gas. You're going to end up on foot. So now you're going to end up with... Okay, what's most important I need to bring with me? The essentials. You know, the rule of thumb is not 72 hours anymore. It's two weeks to be ideal. You need two weeks of stuff. So you're going to end up with something you're ditching, you know, um, unless you're wherever you're at is safe and that you can conceal yourself. And remember, light uh, will at nighttime alert others to your location. So if you're going to build a fire or whatever, do it underground. Dig a hole. There's so much to learn in such a short period of time. We've only got you know these next few months to really get all this crammed in and learn it because if you think that you can stay in, that's great. But you also have to understand what comes with staying home and bugging in because <clears throat> how much populations in your area are you in the country? Are you you know urban or are you royal? Um, you have to figure, uh, defense, do you have proper defense, you know, um, there's so much to think about. It's, 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 it's astonishing because people, like I said, are right now in pre shit to hit, hit the fan mode and they have their amenities. They're comfy. They climb in their bed every night with their sheets. Well, start thinking post hit the fan. And go run down the scenarios that could possibly happen for your location, for your area, and start preparing for that. We know food and water is, is a gimme. So account for two weeks per family member of water and food. And then think about first aid and have enough on hand to uh, take care of abrasions, cuts, broken bones, stab wounds, shot, gunshot wounds, anything that you can foresee. Okay, and try to look past that. So now you have your food, your water, your first aid taken care of. Now you have to look at your climate for your clothing. Uh, if you have the seasons, you know, up here I'm in the northeast, so my seasons change. You know, I have to account for that. Rain is a big one. You, you know, you have to account for rain and being wet. You want something like frog togs, a poncho, waterproof poncho, something. You want to have maps so in case you're forced to leave, you have a direction to go in. You know, um, there's a lot of things to consider, you know, and you need to start doing research now and, and look at that because it's a very, very real thing that's going to happen. And um, it's going to blow a lot of people's minds. They can only sit here and talk about it, but, you know, get in the post shit hit the fan scenario. Don't sit here in the pre fix of it. Look at the post after it happens. So, what scenarios are you going to, you know, and that's why I tell people, man. You know, it's it's a, it's a, going to be a survival situation, and um, you know, then you 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 worry about the FEMA thing. Is that a bona fide real thing? People are throwing. There's so much propaganda. That's another thing that just irks the shit out of me. Is how many 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 years ago, and I I really don't know the specific date, but we used to throw propaganda at foreign countries for our benefit. Okay, now they're allowed to actually do that. To, the, to our own people. Now they're throwing propaganda back at us. And that way it keeps the masses believing whatever they want us to believe. Unless you're a free will thinker outside the box and you don't drink that tap water with the fluoride in it. So the ones that are open minded or already awake, they see what's propaganda and what's not, you know. But sometimes it does get a little bit confusing because it's hard to discern the difference. Some things are just that close of being real you know but could be a false false story just like, like all these even though they call it a false flag event does not mean somebody didn't get killed 
You know, it, it, they're just what they consider collateral damage. You know, there's so many theories behind Sandy Hook. You know, all those kids aren't dead. We see this kid re reappear in this crisis and reappear in that crisis. But just because it's a false flag does not mean that people didn't actually get killed. It just means it was a setup. That's what a false flag means, is that they, whatever agency, pick an alphabet because they're all just as bad as the other. Pick one. They set this scenario in, in works, and they made it happen. You know? So... All these things is enough to make your head spin. If I remember correctly, MG, World War II was the more or less start of propaganda um, being used right. against each other. Because yep. if I remember correctly, the Germans were trying to use propaganda against Americans, and their facts were totally screwed up. And it didn't work. Mind you... The, like Obama's, you mean? Yep. <laughs> My, mind you, America's propaganda machine um, worked perfectly. And now, you know, with this, uh, this new TPPA and the NDAA and all this other stuff, it's, it's perfectly fine for them to turn it right around and do it right to us, too. Yeah. Which is what's going on. It's happening right now. They're using propaganda on the daily to us. And spitting off some crazy ass statistics that are bullshit. And you can see but the thing is they're so freaking blatant in your face. I mean, do you really think we're that feeble minded, that stupid, that we can't see this? Well, obviously if we've been drinking a lot of fluoride because according to Madam President uh, we are supposed to drink more water because it's healthy. Yeah, just like the mandatory vaccinations are, you know, a good thing. But we see that it's got all kinds of shit in it, including formaldehyde. Yeah. Yeah, um, formaldehyde, mercury, rephrase, a, a, um, Substance where half of the molecule is made up of mercury. I still don't want that in my body. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, aluminum. I mean, come on. They're spraying that shit in the air every day. You know, now you have to detox all the heavy metals out of your body. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's phenomenal of the shit that the FDA is saying is okay when it's not. So, like I said, they're flipping shit around. It makes no sense. I mean, it's, you almost feel hopeless, you know? You really do. You almost feel hopeless that there's just no way of fixing this. You're going to need a reset. You need to reboot this puppy. Right. Right. And, and I'm, go ahead. Um, going back to with your vaccines and with all the junk in there. Yet, um, a new law in Colorado uh, is on the books to be voted on, and it would demand the names and addresses of unvaccinated children to be registered with the state. I just saw something in the in the news about that, like today, yesterday, something like that. Some state is supposed to start doing that, which means it's going to be the trickle-down effect. It's going to go everywhere. Yeah. You know? And, like, the communist state, old California, who likes to be the lead runner of all the bullshit, dumbass stuff, you know, um, they, they're they already penalizing people, locking parents up, whatever. Right, right. Yes, I think I saw that. Mm -hmm. All right. And California is, I'm guessing, already passed. Yeah, Colorado is looking into bringing a medical police state to the Rocky Mountains. Right. They got a House Bill 1164 in, just passed by the committee. That, that's insane. Oh, oh, it would be tracked on a secret list. Oh, Maintained yeah. by Colorado. 
a new list. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The state owns your children. Um. No. The community owns your children. Yes, I Weren't saw paying that. paying attention yes. to Obama when he said that? Yeah, that's ridiculous. I mean... That's the biggest line of bullshit. This whole you thing... Just, uh. Take care of your children. Yep. Nobody owns anybody. Oh, and do you want to hear something that just happened in my neighborhood? The local high school... <laughs> they can call you, okay, to let you know that an item has changed on the menu. And they do that quite often. But when there's a threat of a shooting, they don't call. Meantime, a kid overheard another kid talking about it and went home and told his parents about it. Well, the parents went on social media into a, a group focused for that school, bitching and complaining and in hysterics and panic about this, what's going on, and the school's not doing anything about it, school ain't calling anybody, they're calling the local news people, they're calling these parents, called the police department, <clears throat> finally an investigation done, because they weren't sending their kids to school today because of it. Now, mind right. you, this is not an open-door policy school, they've got police stationed there every day. And apparently another kid was arrested, but it was an unrelated situation. Oh, that of the course. Threat, the threat was not credible. Now, another parent said, or suggested, what if the kid who incited this panic because he went home and told his parents and it wasn't, wasn't able to be kept in-house and taken care of, he was probably the one that got caught, you know, busted for inciting panic. You know, that's yep. how fucked up this freaking community is. Fucked up this society is. Unreal. It is. I'm just They're glad that I, you know, my daughter wasn't in that school for four months. And I saw the communism, the Nazi way they run shit, the double standard. Uh -uh. I pulled her right out. That's Good how bad. You. But that's how bad things are. All right. So we kind of got way off of kilter here because we got to talking about vaccines and aliens and craters and all kinds of crazy shit. So um, this uh, sc scopoplamine, <laughs> um, this drug thing seems like it could be viable, seems like it could be probable, um, easily delivered and easily acquired and um, been used forever. So it could be you know, um, to the exact measurement needed to get the job done. So I think that's something to look into. Um, as far as trying to look at these mass shootings as a pattern, there's really no definitive pattern. Um, we try to correspond it with, FEMA, with the FEMA regions, and um, a couple of them fit, but not the others. So... I guess, you know, as far as this goes, it, it just, you know, what's causing all the mass shootings? Like I said, I, I seriously feel like if I sat here and logically looked at this thing, I would have to say it's all part of the gun grab agenda, and um, it's all set up. People um, of today are full of greed, so money goes a long way. Um, you know, they probably haven't realized by now the pattern that usually either they get incarcerated or hushed in other ways. So, you know, me, if someone, you know, comes up to me and offers me a buku bunch of dollars to do some dumb shit <laughs> uh, and promise me nothing's going to happen, I'm going to say, yeah, you're full of shit. I don't think so. But if they come at me with some scoplamine where I'm not going to know what I'm doing, when I do it, how I do it, and after the fact that I did it, then that's a totally different subject. And it's cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, because it's yeah. easily accessible. Well, not only that, but they wouldn't have to pay you off in order for you to go shit up people. Exactly. And, and we know the government is all about saving money. Oh, yeah. Um. <clears throat> Didn't he just uh, 
<clears throat> pull a whole bunch of lotta from the vets to give to this my this uh, Muslim immigration thing. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, they ain't about saving money. If you are not Muslim in this country right now, then you're pretty much on a watch list or headed in a in, in not so good times. I kind of don't want to make this a race thing. I, every time we bring up race, somebody goes completely off the deep end and starts blabbing. It's this, it's that, y'all's racist. Black people aren't racist, but white people are racist. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, that's and you're, bullshit. And and because you can't, the, because you're recognizing the facts about Muslims not being able to assimilate into our our lifestyle in our country here, we're we're also racist because of that. Yeah, that that sounds about right. But because they don't like us, they're not being racist against us. Or perhaps it's the the tolerant thing. We're not being tolerant. They don't yeah. need to be tolerant. They need to look at what's going on overseas in Germany and stuff like that and see what's coming here. No, Get their heads out of their asses. You're 100% right, but, you know, um, they're all saying that it's not true, it's propaganda, blah, blah, blah. So I um, honestly think that... The time is here, and I keep throwing this and harping at it and, and pushing it down to everybody's throats, but get prepared. So, you know, it's like get your ducks in a row now, and when it shit comes, you'll have it mapped out in your head and on a hard copy laminated so that you don't have to freak out, you know. you already got your steps. Practice those steps. You know, that's that's the next step. We we did our, you know, we got this training going where we're doing all these things to get, you know, showing our, you know, getting our preps together, checking our preps, seeing where we're lacking, where we need to beef up. And then we're going to simulate and test those plans. So you might have plan A, B, and C is when they're going to be able to put their plans in effect and test those plans and see if they can adequately find holes in those plans or that if they need to readjust them. So if I'm going to plan A to rally up with whomever, I'm going to test that theory. And if I find opposition or I see a scenario that could affect my uh, way of getting there, then I'm going to go route B. And that way, if we if you practice those things, it'll come so much easier when shit hits the fan and there won't be as much panic. Right. Part of getting ready a as a group and getting all your ducks in a row would be getting in a group now. Not when you see the need a month or two or three from now. Get in it now. And our group is a wonderful group to join. <laughs> spokesman. He's the spokesman. Our spokesman. So yes, now's the time. You know, join up. When we got enough people to get them set and straight and help them out and get them into whatever area they're at. You know, with our other people, so they have their uh, hookup spots and all that stuff. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, it's, it's all about your mentality. People are in their, their pre, pre shit hit the fan mode right now where they're just um, thinking about stuff and maybe looking at all the news articles, shaking their heads. Uh, a lot of them are cowboy keyboard guys, commandos that just sit around and want to bitch and complain and do nothing about it. Um, the thing of the matter is, is that, you know, how long are you going to sit there, bitch and complain? Shit's coming. Shit's here. You know, we see it every day in the news or propaganda or or alternate media. Um, it's out there. It's happening. It's all around us. So, you know, by sitting there talking about it, you're not going to get anywhere with it. And if, you know, I've, I've seen in a couple of other um, – I have an app that's called Tapa Talk where it puts all your forums in one place. And I see a lot of people in the forums and, you know, they're all out there going, I, I don't have anybody in my area. I feel, by, you know, I'm alone. I'm by myself. And, you know, um, what can I do? And my, my solution to that is, you know, 
Patriot Preparedness Network is is national. It's nationwide. We um, have people scattered everywhere. You know, um, we have a heavy concentration in the east. Um, and and even though the west is kind of sparse, you know, one guy's in Colorado and he's like, you know what? There, I would think the mentality out here, you know, in Colorado, there would be a whole lot more than just him, you know, having this this. Um, mindset of you know should hit the fan survivability prepping the whole thing and he's like I haven't been able to find anybody well my solution to that is at what our group does is that we'll help people create their own units in their local area so you might be by yourself but next thing you know if you you know you'll be able to have materials in your hand that will help you get word of mouth out there and find other people and create you only need to you know even if you start out with two of you then word of mouth three of you four of you five of you now you get if you're at a five member team that's a fire team you guys will be able to defend yourself to, you know and create a a little base camp type situation even if it's just in your neighborhood you know like you know a lot of neighborhoods have neighborhood watch you know um, and if you guys feel that you know it's not going to be safe there for a long period of time then all of you together find us a, a plan of where you're gonna bug out to go to that place look at that place scope it out see what you know what's around you that you're gonna be natural resources water is it got a lot of wildlife because you're gonna need to eat if, if your preps run out you know depending on the duration of time that you're out there um, so you, it's it's really helpful to to not only just be in the mindset of thinking about this stuff but actually physically doing it and um, there's a lot of people out there or in militias or bigger groups or patriot groups whatever our group works together um, as a whole as one family so we try to help everyone and and get the resources out there to them and um, that way it's a network everyone's never alone no one's left on their own so um, that's that's the big thing about giving back and helping people and getting them ready and getting them organized. That's a big thing because you have to think about post shit hit the fan, and uh, if you start thinking about survival skills, bushcrafting, and that kind of thing, you're on your way to a pretty good start. And you know we've got guys who do homesteading, bushcrafting, you know, help you build your bug out bag, um, all kinds of things, the gear that you need. You know, we get we find and and utilize the all the resources we have out there as a collective group nationwide and throw it all in one spot so everybody has what they need in the opportunity to do what they got to do in or to ensure their survivability for themselves and their family we we not only you know practice stuff but training we train with um, our firearms to be proficient so that we can defend ourselves and our our preps um, and um, hunting skills, you know, it all kind of goes hand in hand. So even though if you're not able to own a firearm, there's several other ways, several other means. There's, you know, you're, you have bows and arrows. There's um, primitive things that you can put together. We, you know, that's part of bushcrafting. Um, slingshots. Yeah, slingshots. I mean, there's so many other things, you know, throwing knives, whatever. You don't have to have a firearm to be able to defend Trips. yourself. Excuse me? Traps. Oh yeah, traps for small game or whatever. There's so much to learn, and it, and it's all in one spot. That's what makes it so cool. All right, guys, I'm gonna end it here. Y'all have a good one. And remember, it wasn't raining when Noah built the ark, so prepare today to survive tomorrow.